All right, so let's uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Glad everyone is here today. And Acts chapter uh, 28 is what we're going to be discussing uh, today. Uh, Father, thank you for the, uh, the word of God. We ask that that would use it in our life to give us direction, to correct us, to instruct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's look at Acts chapter 28. Uh, Mrs. Gorm, are you there today? She's not, she's not here today. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Jake, if you start with verse 28, verse 1, and, um, and uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and read verse 1, then Bill, verse 2, and so forth. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And bar- uh, barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. Okay, Elaine, go into verse 2, please. Okay. Pardon Gal- me, verse, pardon me, pardon me, I'm sorry, verse 3. Um, okay. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, the king was wiped around the heat and fastened on his hand. And Paul, verse 4, please. And when the and when the barbarians saw when the barbarians saw the, the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom thou had, whom thou whom, whom, whom doubt he had escaped the seas, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Right, uh, Barber, verse five, please. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swum or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm came to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a dragon. <coughs> and the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days previously. And it came to pass that the father of Pibilius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So we see here that the, um, um, in, the chapter, in chapter 27 of the book of Acts um, they were involved in a shipwreck uh, a, large, uh, a large vessel um, was was shipwrecked. Uh, was it 276 um, there are about uh, people that were on the ship uh, that were uh, that were saved, that were rescued, and came to this island. And so it's the name of the island is Melita. That's the uh, with the island that they that they uh, landed on. And over here on the map, if you, if you want to see where that is, it's off the off of Sicily a little bit. If you know where Sicily is, in Italy, and then at the tip of Italy you have Sicily. And then beyond Sicily, and probably um, 50 more miles to the uh, south, we have uh, Melita. So, um, do you have a concept of uh, geography, Paul? Paul, do you have a concept of geography? Uh, Some. Like you, you know, you're, can you name some European countries? Uh, Italy, Switzerland, Germany, France, Sweden. Yeah. Okay, good. So you named, you don't have to name them all, Paul, but you named um, Italy. I'll, I'll show it to you again here. It's, um, it's right there. And so when, when you think of Italy, Paul, uh, Italy, you know what shape Italy is, Paul? The shape of a boot. Okay. And at the tip of, the tip of Italy, what country is there? Uh, it's Switzerland. It's Sicily, right? Sicily? Uh, about, and then beyond Sicily is where we have Melita. Uh, just, just to... Good idea. So you, you, you may I, not. I was going to start to say countries so more than that. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I did, Paul. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. So you know what? You know how to give a concept of what's where, where Italy. I mean, what it is shaped as the Mediterranean Sea, and we're looking at a map, and and so I thought you could help us describe what we're seeing here. So we see the boot of Italy. At the, at the tip of the boot, we have Sicily, and then beyond Sicily, about 50 miles or so, we have Melita, which is the place where Paul and this um, all these other men on the ship. Uh, have landed. They were, they were shipwrecked. And uh, Jacob, would you like to do a question two, please? How were all the former <coughs> amateurs received? With much kindness, 
as it says, no little kindness, so that is much kindness. Yeah, they were very, um, very receptive to this, uh, this, this, this group of people. And uh, yes, some, yes, Jacob. You know, I'm seeing the map here, and I'm noticing something that I, I think I knew before when they showed a close-up of it. Yeah, I believe it's Malta. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the modern day, that's right, modern, modern day, modern day Malta. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't hear him? I wonder why Italy's got a king Sicily around like that, though. Just, just, uh, it's not very nice of Mrs. Jacob. There, we do have a hearing uh, assistance device if you want, want me to get you, get you one. Do you like it? Okay. And you would hear him very clearly. Be- better than I could, probably, uh, with, that, with that device. That, that's sick. It's, they're not, very, not being very kind, are they? Um, no, they, I'm looking on the map, and it looks like they've been kicking them around for a Yes, long they have been. They have been, Jacob. I wonder if they actually picked the. Too. Maybe, and yeah, maybe, uh, maybe Melita got kind of kicked off the Sicily, <laughs> in, <laughs> in some in some way or the other. Um, kicked kick, kick Sicily so hard, Melita broke off. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so uh, we were looking at this maybe another call for us. I'm not sure if it is or not. We'll keep on talking in case it's not. But um. We see in verse in verse three of chapter twenty eight, um, you know they were they were coming out uh, they were coming they were coming on they were, they were in the lake they were one they were cold they were wet and they were gathering it was it was winter time um, and they were gathering sticks for for the build a fire now to to put put it in a in a context of these these people are showing them no little kindness have you ever I'm sure you've seen. Um, these transports were, you know, it says keep back 50 feet or 500 feet, whatever it might be, I'm not sure what the distance is, because they're transporting some, some, some criminals, some convicts of some sort. Sometimes they're, they're low offenders, low, low, low degree offenders, and they're taking them to different parks to do clean up and so forth. And they want, they want you to stay away from, they don't want you to get too close in case, for some reason, they're able to release themselves from the bus or whatever vehicle they're in and somehow do you some harm. Well, part, part of the, some of the men on the ship were prisoners, but yet we have the natives that are there on this little small island in Melita. They're showing them no little kindness. They're very, 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 very inhospitable to them. Maybe they don't know their their convicts. I mean, they're granted. They're, 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 some of these men, for instance, Paul was considered a convict. He was well, he's been he's been not, not a convict. He wasn't convicted yet, but he's being taken to trial. He was appealed to he appealed to, to Caesar. But, but nonetheless, we see that he's carrying, this is specifically Paul, is carrying a bundle of sticks. Um, and he's, he's picking up his, this bundle of sticks to, do, to help with the fire, to help light a fire. And when he picks it up, we see that a viper fastens himself uh, to, his, to his hand. The viper, a viper comes along and he, he bites him. Now, it's, it's a poisonous snake. Snakes will either, either choke you or or square or constrictors or they're, they're, they're going to be poisonous. And so this, this particular snake was identified. Um, the, the natives, it could have been, um, um, you have these right, red, yellow, and black snakes, stripes, and depending on the sequence of, of I mean, there's all sorts of poisonous snakes. That was a coral snake. You okay, that's a coral snake. He's, he's friendly, right? No, or he's he's not. King snake looks like a. Okay, but the sequence you got so uh, red next to black. Red on black, venom black. Okay, For red next to black, it's okay. He's friendly, but uh, red red next to yellow. That's that's the that's the wrong sequence. Of course, if I if I see a snake that's red, I'm going to get my poem all mixed up, probably. But uh, but I want I would want to stay away from any snake, probably. Um, if I could, I mean, some. Yeah. Now, Jacob, he's, he's been telling me he gets close. He gets close to rattlesnakes, and he, he shoots them. And he does shoot them. He takes a pitchfork, which I don't carry pitchforks around with me all the time, and he takes the pitchfork and he puts it through the head. Is that you, Jacob, or your friend that does that? No, it was a friend of mine. He, okay. You have a pitchfork to keep the snake from biting themselves because they say rattlesnake is good on a barbecue. Okay. I don't know. I never ate. Them. Right. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try some tonight, Jacob. We'll, we'll try some tonight. It probably tastes like chicken. Um, uh, Bill, question number four, please. Okay, what did the barbarians think Paul was? They thought he was a murderer. 
they, th they thought he was a murderer because of the fact of, of um, they, they thought that he escaped the, 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 the shipwreck. Everyone escaped the shipwreck. But yet, his, and they, they, this, is, this is part of their superstition of these people, part of, part of the idea of, of payback, kind of like a karmic kind of concept, or whatever, whatever their thinking was. They thought, this guy's murder, he's, he deserved to die in the shipwreck, but yet he's going to die right here on a shore. Barbara, you thought? I was just going to say, the concept of karma is yes. not new. No, it's not. It's not new. It's been, <coughs> it's been around for a long time. It's a, it's a false concept, of course. We do not believe in it. We don't teach it. We don't accept it. It's wrong, but nonetheless, there are people that, that, are, that, are, that are teaching that. I mean, even, well, people that are believing it. People that should know better sometimes are believing and thinking that the karma is a, an act and a right thing. Um, and so we see in verse 5, um, when, the, when, the venom, when, when the venomous beast, when the serpent and the snake bit Paul on the, on, the, on the hand and the arm, he just, he probably said, ouch, or he probably responded in some way, but he shook it off. I mean, that's our reflex. You know, if, we, if, we, if we touch, accidentally touch something that's warm, or if we pinch ourselves, or something happens, we, we have a reflex. And we, we, we kind of respond to it, and so it, he shook it off. And the, the snake, the venomous serpent, uh, ended up in, in the fire. And so now we have all these natives here on Melita. Hi, Jill. All these, all these natives here on Melita, we have them looking at him, kind of. They, they know, they, they're, they're, they're familiar with the snake, and so they don't have watches, but, uh, but they're, they're waiting because they know it's going to be only a matter of minutes before he's going to start changing the way he looks, his complexion, as soon as that poison starts to take into him, and he's going to fall over, and then a little bit longer, it's going to be, he's going to be dead. How much, how long it takes, could take a few hours, um, but it doesn't take too long for someone to be, uh, to die from a, from a, the bite of a poisonous snake. Uh, if you don't have the, the right anti-venom or the right treatment, even, even with all that, I suppose there's still a problem. But they didn't have any of that type of stuff in this time period, during the time period of the Apostle Paul. And so, they're, they're, they see him, they, they, he's carrying sticks, they get, he gets bitten by this, this venomous snake, and they, says, they say to themselves, that guy's a murderer. He really should have died in the, oh, in, in, in the shipwreck, but yet he's going to die right here on, on the shore, but because he was bitten by this by venomous serpent. And they wait, and they wait, and, um, and then in verse 6, what do they do here? Uh, Barbara, question six, please. What did the local people who lived on the island think Paul was now? They thought he was a god. Okay, so they go, he go, they, they had him, he was promoted from a murderer uh, to, to a god. Um, how, what, what that's some, that is some promotion. They're not, they're not, um, well, just a moment ago, they were, they, they, they were, they were believing that, that the apostle Paul was a murderer. These the people here on the, Island of Melita. They, they were saying that he was a murderer. Well, what a fickle bunch. Yeah, they are, aren't they? they? They were. And so, but now they're saying that he's a guy because the snake had no didn't harm him whatsoever. Either um, way, karma works. Yes, that's, that's true. And in their strange way of thinking, it did. Um, now, we see, we see that we mentioned here a man named, by the name of Publius. Now, he is the a chief man of the island. Um, and he's uh, and they lodge, they lodge there in that ter part of the island for three days, according to verse in verse seven. Now we notice that Publius was sick, um, but Elaine, please do question eight. <coughs> well, what was the condition of the people that they were sick Okay, so here we have, thinking, thinking again from the situation what's going on, this, this shipwreck, of course all the men in the ship are happy, very glad to be on the land. Uh, Fourteen days without, without uh, food and water, um, most, of, most of the time they had no, the sun was all covered up with the, with the black stormy, stormy, uh, 
storm, and uh, and how they're coming to the land. Paul is getting some sticks together to put on the fire to keep warm and maybe even to cook some help to cook some food. He's bitten by a serpent. They think they think he's a, a murderer. He doesn't die. They think he's a god. And now he comes and he heals the chief the chief of the uh, the island of Melita, uh, Publius. And um, then they were there for, for three days. But the but people just had this bloody flux. He had some type of fever. And um, and it was likely if you had if Paul not, not helped him and not prayed for him and not healed him, he would have um, he would have died. Let's um let's read verses nine and following here. Uh, Jacob, please uh, begin with verse nine. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Who also honored us <coughs> with many honors, and when we uh, departed. They laded us with such things as were necessary. And after three months we returned in the ship of Alexandria, which I wondered in the off, we saw it was cast in the palace. Alright, verse 12, Paul. And landing at Syracus, Syracus, we. We tarried knowing three days. We, we tra- Let me read it again. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Petulic. Petulic? <coughs> yeah. Where are we Little from? Aeoli. Sorry. And you're fine. <laughs> Where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us. As far as Abbey, there <coughs> were three taverns who, when Paul saw us, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself. And it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. So, going back to uh, Melita for a moment. So, when they see that the chief the chief of the of Melita, when we when we notice that when the other people living on the island notice that he's been healed, the word gets around, and then all of a sudden more people come to see Paul. They kind of they come, um, and the apostle Paul, through the, through the power of the power of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is able to heal those people as well. Um, let me see, Paul. Um, Question number 10. Want to read that for me, Lane, please? Uh, uh, well, he has this frail book. But, uh, uh, read, 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 verse, read the question in the verse form. Now, Paul, Paul can read the verse. You read the question, Lane, and Paul, you read the, you read the verse, Paul. Okay. Read verse 10. Read verse 10? Yes. <coughs> uh, okay. It says, Who also... See, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they did they did us with such things as as, as were as were uh, necessary. Okay, let me go and read the question, please. Okay, what did the residents of the island give to the men when they departed? Did they did they upon such, such things that were necessary? Okay, they gave them what they needed. Again, they lost everything in the shipwreck. And so they tell them what they had on, what are the clothes, what they had on their back, and so they were able to. They were very friendly people, and they gave them, or at least uh, hospitable people, to, to a point, and they gave them what was um, necessary to them. And so you notice here, it seems as though they went maybe went to a different different section of the island, even though it's a small island, and they remained there for three months, um, and then they uh, then they continued on to the journey uh, up up to um, up to Italy. Back to, to Italy, to, to Rome, where they, it's where they were 
where, we're, where they're actually ultimately headed. Uh, but notice again this ship, uh, another ship from Alexandria, the previous ship that got lost in the wreck. That ship was from Alexandria, which um, that's uh, down in Egypt, of course. Here's the Mediterranean down here in, in, uh, in northern Africa. That's Alexandria. The other ship, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the, the home port of the ship, essentially. I mean, uh, Alexandria. So they, they, they were, and they had lots of ships coming out of Alexandria. So it's right, right there. And so uh, they were on the ship, and um, they, came, they, they were continued on their, uh, their journey. Sign was cast from Pollux. And uh, uh, Barbara. Castor and Pollux were the twins better known as the zodiac sign of Gemini. Gemini, okay. It's uh, not, not, not good to have those type of signs in your, uh, or names in your, in your vessels. Well, but it was a Roman vessel. Yeah, but of course, yes, it was. It was a Roman vessel. So what do you expect? Uh, we should not be surprised. Um, and that just shows, shows the, the degree of paganism. And sadly, uh, the many, many people, not many, there are some Christians who, who get involved in astrology in the different degrees. Uh, not astronomy. Astronomy is an interesting study. But when you, when you take astronomy to another step, another level, and you, you make, uh, want to make certain predictions, certain things uh, about that astronomy, make it astrology, uh, then that's, that's not a good thing to do. So Christians should not be involved in any type of astrology. If they want to be involved in astronomy, they can. But astrology <coughs> is something that should be... Uh, should be <coughs> so, okay. just a second, Jacob. Just, just a second, Jacob. Joe? Like, um, not only is it no longer according to the Bible, it's not placing faith in God, it's placing faith, faith in something else, totally different than God's and totally evil, you know, and everything, divination. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's also adding to the Word of God in a way because it's, well, I don't know, the fact is that they're not putting their trust in God's Word, they're putting it in something outside of God's mm-hmm. Word, whether they want to call it in addition to God's Word or really, in actuality, in place of God's Word. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, it's, people want to make, get their predictions from astrology um, and say certain things may, may might happen in their own life or in the life of other people or either, either in, in, the, in the immediate future, you know, today or tomorrow, whatever it might be, or, um, or sometime down the road. Somebody might be too impatient and waiting for an answer from God, perhaps, I don't know, and they just go to astrology to see a so-called quote, quote, answer. Right, and sometimes people, uh, Jacob, I'll be there in a second with you. I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes people will get you, uh, get you, will get and use astrology to try and support a biblical principle. They go to astrology, and so this is this is going to support something that's going to happen. This is going to support an event of the Bible. This astrology. Well, they'll, some, sometimes they'll say they may not say it that way, but when you when you uh, translate what the, when you kind of push away things that they're saying, and ultimately it comes down to the foundation is astrology and not the Word of God. It's almost like Nostradamus predicts stuff, and certain people latch onto what he's saying and say, well, that's a prediction of, look at the end of the world, and the Bible talks about the end of the world, or whatever they quote him as saying. Mm-hmm. Right. To him as saying. right. All right, Jacob, uh, then Bill and Barbara. Jacob? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. You know, this, this, was, uh, this was an uh, Alexandrian ship, but it was Roman, and this Castor and Pollux. I was, I was, it reminded, it reminded me of, I think it was in the things to come, the, uh, the history on the, on the prop, you know, that prophecy class we had. In the early part of that, we were looking at, uh, them Alexandrians, them, them uh, Greek Gnostics, they were, they were trying to follow the, uh, the, 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 Gre- the Greco-Roman things more than the Bible. They were, they were interpreting the Bible by all that Greco-Roman hubbub and, and this fits right into that. And tomorrow, the 23rd, this Christian astrology, this is That's right. junk. And uh, this is another false prophecy tomorrow. They say September 23rd is going to be the rapture, and there's no such thing. It'll fall by the wayside. There, there, there is such a thing as the rapture, Jacob. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but it's not, not in yeah. the terms yeah, of... Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's possible that the Lord could return any time, but we understand that. But there, but there, there's specific reasons why people are saying it'll happen tomorrow. Yeah, uh, and there, 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 whether it's the rapture, uh, or if it's the second coming, or if it's the end of the end of the world, they're they they're, they can't agree among themselves. Uh, these these groups. Uh, Bill, just like Bill, Barbara, then Paul. Bill, go ahead. Uh, we've studied in uh, uh, 
church here uh, a few months ago. Uh, there was a passage, I don't remember what book it was from, uh, but witchcraft and sorcery and all of that stuff is condemned mm-hmm. uh, by the Bible. And right. That mm-hmm. Even if I can't remember which verse it was, uh, I know those are practices that uh, mm-hmm. are outlawed. God does not for, uh, permit that. So mm-hmm. uh, that's good enough. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyone, anyone that's, you know, is uh, focusing on this type of thing, you're, you're welcome to come to the services on, on Sunday. We care about we care about you, and um, we, we would like to see you, anyone that would like to come. Um, and any, any Sunday, not this, this coming Sunday. Uh, oh, or, they can come this Sunday, too. Yeah, they come this Sunday, too, and, and we have a service on Thursday, <laughs> a Thursday evening, midweek service. And we should all be here. Yes. Yeah, we should all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be here. Yes. yes. All right, Barbara, your thought. Um, if you really want to confuse somebody, uh, you know, they ask you your sign, tell them it's the cross. Okay. Because <laughs> That's good. Um, at, you know, because my standard answer is, why should I worship the stars when I can worship the one who made them? Right. Mm-hmm. That's okay. excellent. That's good. I like that. Paul, you had a thought. Uh, with these people that make these so-called predictions, does it, I can't remember where... I read it. I can't remember where it said. Then it said, it "said that no man knoweth the day or the hour." Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's correct, Paul. You're right. In the New yes, Testament. Jesus said that. Mm-hmm. And the kingdom of God does not come by observation. Right. All right, Mom. Question twelve, please. For how many days did they remain in the surface? Three days. Three days. And so, um, you see, uh, once the south wind began to blow. Um, they began to travel to um, the, their idea of fetching the compass is uh, in, in, in the um, in elementary school well, at least that's when I first was exposed to a compass uh, when you want to draw a circle you have this, this uh, device that kind of looks like a V I mean it could go bigger than a V but and the, on one side you have a pencil on the side you have a point and so you put the point down and you, and you Kind of spin it around like this compass. to drive. It's, it's a compass, and so the idea of, of when we say compass, this is what it means. They they, they did a circuit of a sort. It's not. It's not. It's not the. Uh, I think that it reacts to the a magnet of of uh, the, the, the magnetic pole, the North Pole, to tell you which direction you're going. But it's a circuit that they that they did. So they did a, a little bit of a, a compass. Uh, they, they they fetched the compass. They, they did a compass. They did a little circuit, and. Um, well, Tammy, do you have a thought or about that? In, ver- in verse, uh, verse 11. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Um, we're in verse 13. We didn't do 13 yet. Um, yes, I guess I skipped down to 13. Did you do, um, did you do 12, Mom? Yes, you did. Okay. And so so we're, we're on... We're on 13, uh, question 13. I'm talking about the compass, you know, the south wind blew. And the compass is the, is the, is the arc, is like a, like a, you know, to think, think if you, it's a, it's a portion of a circle. They, they, they took a, they took a little, they took a compass and came to Regalium. Well, I, oh, Sam, go ahead. You're not. I do have a comment. Uh, I didn't know what verse was, I didn't know what the word exactly was. Like when they say compass, yes, it's like to go around Mm -hmm. in a circle, Mm -hmm. that's correct. And um, after one day, the south wind blew, and we came to to, uh, (coughs) they they came to the next next destination uh, the next day. So here we have Regillium um, up here, and then up here is where they went on the, the, the next day. So they're getting closer, much, much better progress they were making before when they were all out here in this um. In this, in this big, in this big storm. Um, um, yes, yeah, that's up, up here. Let me show you. See the right there, William. You know, Where is Rome? Oh, Rome is up here. Oh. I'm sorry, Regalium is here. Rome is, Rome is, Rome is way up here to the. Yeah, that's right. Rome is way up there. Well, what did you say? What was down there? Did you say down there? Regalium, Regalium, and then if we look, if we look at the verse, uh, that's that's where they came first, Regalium, and then uh, they, the next the next time is um, Putelio, Putelii, or something close to Putelii. Putelii is right there. 
Okay, and then so, um, Joe, question 14, please. How many days did Paul and company tarry brethren? Seven. Seven days, so they, they were there for seven days. <coughs> um, that was question 14. Um, and um, if, if you're interested in um, those, that special device, we have that for you, if you would like that. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, after he met the... So Paul was able to meet some of the, some of the Christians, the brethren. When he talks about the brethren, it's like born-again Christians. Um, and so what did Paul do after he met some of the brethren who came to see him? Um, he thanked God and he took courage. He was glad, finally, to make it from all the way, way on the other side of, of the Mediterranean to the, um, way on the other side of the Mediterranean, over here to, uh, to Caesarea. He was in Caesarea, and then through the course of his, his, different, his journeys like this, he and the shipwreck, don't forget the shipwreck. He made it all the way up to up to where to his stop here. He was rightfully thanked God and he took courage. Um, and um, Tammy, uh, question sixteen, please. Uh, what was Paul permitted to do? Uh, Paul was able to go alone and with a soldier. Okay, so he was there. Uh, he was there. He was kind of um, had liberty to be in his own house, but there was there was a. I'm sorry. You could put on put, switch now. It'd be all right. Uh, he, he had the liberty of being there, kind of a under house arrest of a sort. Um, so today, people sometimes have those ankle bracelets they wear. Well, Paul got the glorified ankle, ankle bracelets of his Roman soldier that's um, sitting in the next room or sitting across across the across the way from you. Free technology. Yes, that's right. Free technology, that's right. Mm-hmm. Property. Uh, the Appian Forum. Yes. Uh, you can still walk the Appian Way. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, the longest, straightest road in all of Europe. Uh, the, the brethren came down from Rome to meet them uh, at the Appian Way at the Three Taverns, which is a, a, just like a place. You can still go there. Mm-hmm. And um, it's 35 miles south of Rome. 35 miles to the south of Rome. Mm-hmm. Straight roads. Sometimes you can't find straight roads around here. Sometimes you can. But, uh, but the... Um, well, it's the best way to march an army. Right, it is. It is the best way to march an army. Right, a straight road. I agree. Um, yes, Jacob. Yes, uh, I was reminded of this thing in, in uh, chapter 15. Yes. And he thanked God and took courage. But over here in 27... Three. And the next day we touched his side, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go on to his friends to refresh himself. Uh, that Koinonia, it's good for us to meet together with yes, other Christians. Yes, it is. It's, if you're able to, it's good to be present with other Christians if you're able to. Yes. So find some Christians. If you know anyone, that, any Christians nearby, and I go to go meet with them this Sunday perhaps. Tammy. A comment on that. And Jacob, for being all the way in Texas, he's often on the phone with us. And yes, he is. Present with us, and, and a lot more than other people who may be closer. Right. Mm-hmm. With us. That's right. That's true. Yes. And, and he's a hub for those of us who can't always. Yes, sometimes come. that's true. <laughs> Even yes. though we live in the neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> that's true. That's very nice of him to uh, serve as a hub. To, uh, uh-huh. He, he can listen to, he can listen to the, the, the streaming, and then he, he hooks up a phone, and people that can't make it uh, who are local, that's very nice of him to do that. He goes three-way, and Rob yes. is on, too. Yes. <laughs> that's well, good. Very I, I good. I don't know. I, I think I feel more blessed than, uh, than y'all. I mean, I, there ain't no church around here. I could drive 100 miles, and there's one that's acceptable, but, uh, you know, I, I just, that's a long way, you know. Right. It is. It is Jacob. And uh, after three days, verse 17, uh, Paul called together some of the chief of the Jews. So now he's finally going to be interacting and talking with some of the Jews. And um, he's going to be telling them uh, what, what his background is. He says that he's, uh, 
He's falsely accused. He committed nothing against the people, the customs of the fathers. Um, but yet, he's going to be here in, in Rome to appeal to Caesar. Barbara. Uh, I, have, I have a question, thought. Okay. Men and brethren, after he, after he collected the chief of the Jews together, mm-hmm. he addressed them as men and brethren. Right. I am assuming that some of them were believers as well as just non-believers. Yeah. I think that would be true. I think that would be a good, a good assessment because in the... Um, in chapter 4, Peter, I think that's the same as either chapter 4, chapter 3, maybe chapter 2, he uses the term men and brethren as well. And then also men and brethren need to fear God. Uh, but um, yeah, there are probably, probably a mixture of people that are there. But primarily, I think the, the, he's, this, the, the topic of his address is for the Jewish people so they know who he is. And even the, 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 the believers then the introduction with this, so they know he, who he is as well. Let's... Um, Let's begin reading, reading the game with verse uh, 18. So, Jacob, um, start reading there in verse 18, please. Who, when he examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of it. <coughs> And they said unto him, We neither we neither receive letters out of Judea concerning they neither any of the brethren that came showed or speak any harm of them. But we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified. The kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning until the evening. And some believe the things which were spoken, and some believe not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that Paul had spoken one word, Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Did you read Elaine yet? Yeah, I did. You read it right? Okay. Uh, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye he shall hear, and ye shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. So, Jacob, um, Question 18, please. I think uh, you may still be on mute, Jacob. Um, I am. Okay, okay. I have to read the question again then. What did Paul tell the Jews about his examination? He said, Who would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me? Mm hmm. That's right. Um, and so, uh, verse 19. It was a free boat, right? Yep, that's right. It was a free boat, right? It was a... <laughs> well, he paid it in the cash. Uh, there, no, there was no door yet. There was no, no, no such thing as a free lunch or Jacob, but, uh, <laughs> but um, free boat ride. Um, I was constrained. So, uh, he says, uh, Paul was said that he was constrained uh, to appeal to, uh, to Caesar. Um, I'm missing some of that, but he would, I mean, not some of this, but if you're, I'm not trying okay, to uh, I was, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar, because, he, uh, because if you remember, they wanted to take him from Caesarea, which, and then to, uh, to, down to Jerusalem, which we don't have to, I'll just show, I'll just show the people that are here, um, from Caesarea, down to Jerusalem, so he's telling them, and then, of course, they were already had a conspiracy in his life, and so they uh, so he appealed to Caesar, and that's where he's at now. He's up, he's he's finally made it to um to Rome. Uh, Bill, uh, question twenty, please. Why did Paul say he was bound with a chain? And I'm not really sure of this answer, but uh, it seems to be for the hope of Israel. Yes, for the hope of Israel. <laughs> Um, uh, that's uh, that's why he was why he was bound with this chain because of of 
he, he wanted he wanted so much for the for Israel to be able to receive uh, the gospel. He wanted so much for them to understand uh, what um, the gospel, who the Messiah was, and Israel had and, and they they were looking for the Messiah, and the Messiah comes right in front of them, right to their right to Jerusalem, and what do they do? They reject him for the most part. Most of them re- are most of the Jews rejected the Messiah. Barbara. When he was before Agrippa, he said, And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope say, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Yeah. And I verily say, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. And he goes on. Um, and he tells about his conversion experience. Uh, how that Christ should suffer and should be first raised from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. It was the Jews who sent him to Rome, not, not the Romans. Yes, and so we see here, um, he sees in verse 21, uh, the Jews uh, from Rome, they said that we didn't receive any letters from you, we haven't heard any, anything good, from, good about you or anything bad about you. Um, uh, so they, they didn't really know who he was. And oh, other, than, other than what he said, Jacob, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking what Barbara just read. Uh, he was, Paul was talking about the resurrection and for the hope of Israel. That just screams out a uh, Titus 2.13, don't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, waiting for the blessed hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Barbara, question 22, please. What was spoken against in every place? <clears throat> This, this sect, uh, the sect of the way. Yes, of, of Christianity. It's, it was, uh, was they, were, they were opposed to it. Um, the Jewish Jewish people were. Um, they, they, they are still opposed to it. And um, and so we see that in verse 23, uh, that Paul was there from morning to <coughs> evening talking to them, uh, uh, but talking about the Jews, uh, about the prophets, and how... Um, uh, how all the all the how Moses and the prophets, everything points, everything talks about the Messiah, concerning concerning Jesus. He's looking at the Old Testament, and he's showing them about Moses and about the prophets, how they all are pointing to, and talking about uh, talking about Messiah. Elaine, I want to do question number twenty four, please. Oh, okay. The question was, how did Jesus Okay, that's how that's how it is um, today. Sometimes there are people that will accept what we say. Some people will reject what we say, particularly about the gospel. Mm-hmm. There'll be people that will accept the gospel. People that re- will reject the gospel. And um, same thing here, Bill. We had uh, the ultimate preacher of all time on earth. Yes, we did. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and not everybody believed him. No, that's right. That's true. Excellent point. And so, why would, we, why would we be surprised when they don't believe us? That's right. That's what, that's what you're saying. Uh, and so we see that um, in verse 25, <clears throat> uh, and when, and as far as the agreement, uh, when, did they all agree with the, what the Paul had expounded to them? And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after uh, the Paul had spoken. So they didn't all agree um, with each other. But uh, Jacob, you thought? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Uh I'm looking for it right now. It's in uh, oh, uh, Ezekiel 2, where he said, uh, let me see, I'm looking for it. What, uh, whether they shall hear, whether they shall forbear, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, here it is in, in uh, Ezekiel 2, 5. And whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for their rebellious house, yet shall they know that there have been a prophet among them. Good. So it's not we're, we're, we don't save people. Christ does, and we just put we're supposed to proclaim the gospel, uh, pr- speak the truth in love, and and you know it's the Holy Spirit, it's the act of the Trinity itself that draws these people or not. Uh, That's right. Mm-hmm. Flesh will keep you from doing it. Pride will hinder you. You just submit to what you see as truth you know, when the Holy Spirit draws you. That's right. To do it easy, I think. Mm-hmm. I've learned that. <laughs> took a long way to do it, but you know, I don't think everybody comes the first time they hear it. No, you're right. You're right, Jacob. Barbara. 
Uh, and when they agreed not among themselves, but he was talking to the Jews. <clears throat> yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. And he had discussed with them the hope of Israel, which as Jacob said was the resurrection, and that was he had discussed that under Agrippa and everything mm-hmm. else too. So when they disagreed themselves, he's back to splitting the Sadducees and yes. the Pharisees. Yes, the same same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, doctrine will divide. Uh, Paul, uh, do question number twenty six. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm going to read verse 26 and then yes. Elaine will read the, go ahead and read verse 26 Paul and then Elaine's going to read the question to you sure saying go unto this people and say hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and, see, and seeing ye shall not see and not perceive okay the question is what did it say say about what people would hear and see yeah, what people would hear and see the truth that they would not, that they would not receive or, or come to an understanding. Even if they're going to hear, they're not going to understand, and if they see, they're not going to perceive. So I think what uh, can I, uh, can I oh. say something. Please do. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think what it's meant there was that they're talking, um, they're they're witnessing, uh, they're witnessing to Jesus, and um, like uh, you know, it's uh, unfortunately like it's a case some. Some will accept it, some will reject it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. Sorry, Tammy. Oh, um, uh, okay. Um, I was just going to mention that it's found in Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 6, <coughs> uh, 9 and 10. Isaiah 6, verses 9 to 10. That's good. Good, uh, good thought there. I like that. Um, let's read some more. Uh, Jacob uh, 27. And Bill 28. Sorry, the following. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But it, uh, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reason and among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hard house and received all that came all that came in unto him. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Alright, that's uh, the end of the chapter there. But uh, if we look in your verse, uh, go back to verse 27. The condition of um, mankind's heart, ears, and eyes. Ears that are dull of hearing and eyes that are closed. And um, the heart is waxed gross. So they're, they're just, they don't, they're not ready to receive. They're, 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 in, a, they're in a position to, to reject to reject the gospel and not, not receive the gospel. Uh, Mom, uh, question 28, please. To where has the salvation of God been sent? It's sent unto the Gentiles. It was sent into the Gentiles. That's right. And um, and so, uh, in verse 29, what did the Jews do among themselves? We see they had great reasoning among themselves. Because um, they, they, they were hearing something that they had not heard before. Uh, and so they were, they're trying to work it out, and they're reasoning it out. And many of them will reject it. Just like the, just like the Jews back in Jerusalem... The, the Jews, the Jews that are that are here in, in Rome, are doing the same. Uh, they're doing the same thing. Um, uh, question um, number twenty-eight, please, Mom. Twenty-eight. Yes. For where has the salvation of God been sent? It is sent into the Gentiles. It's sent to the to the Gentiles, and um, and they were um, had this this reasoning among themselves. And uh, Jill, question 30, please. How many years did Paul dwell in his own hired house? Two whole years. Two whole years. Um, and there were two things he did there when he was in his hired house. Uh, he preached and he taught, and he did this with, um, with all confidence. Uh, he did this with all, with all, with all confidence. And um, Tammy, um, what about your thought? Uh, he was a good man. He was. He was. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tammy, uh, 32, please. Mm-hmm. 
32? Question 32, yes. Right at 28, 23, 24. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him unto his um, lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both <coughs> out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening, and some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. In question 33, thank you for that. Uh, question 33. The Apostle Paul was stoned in which chapter of the book of Acts? Well, if you look at Acts chapter 14, verse 19, and there came there, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. The Jews, the non believing Jews, always wanted to follow Paul around and stir up trouble. And there are sometimes people that are do not want to believe the truth of the Word of God, the truth of the Gospel, and they still want to do everything they can to have an excuse not to believe, and so sometimes they'll stir up trouble. Uh, Jacob, um, question 34, please. 34, where in the book of Acts does one learn of the four daughters of Philip, and what is something notable about Philip? It's uh, in chapter 21, and Philip was an evangelist, he was one of the seven that was picked from chapter 6 when they picked Stephen. Yes, that's right. To minister to the Grecians that were neglected, they said. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, then, question 35. Scripture records Paul being bitten by a venomous snake. In which chapter of the book of Acts, uh, in what island did this happen? Uh, Bill, what, what's the answer to that one? Where in the book of Acts is the great sermon of Stephen? Oh, verse uh, 35, I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, okay. Scripture records Paul being bitten by a venomous snake. One, in which chapter of the book of Acts, which is 28, and two, on which island was he when he, when this happened? Believe it. Mm, that's right. And um, is that near Gilligan's Island? <laughs> um, no, it's not. Oh, okay. It's not. Um, Gilligan's Island is over in the, uh, in the Pacific. Oh. Okay. I guess. Three hour tour, though. Um, yeah, yeah Paul, Paul had a. Uh, he, his shipwreck was much more dramatic than. Uh, Gilligan's got nothing on him. Um, but, um, um, and so, um, Barbara, question 36, please. Where in the book of Acts is the great sermon of Stephen recorded, and what is your favorite part of this final sermon? sermon? Uh, chapter 7. And my favorite verse is that God was with him when he was when Joseph was Joseph's brother sold him into Egypt. Uh, it didn't seem like it at the time, I'm sure, but um, yes. later on he mm-hmm. said to his brothers, "God sent me ahead of you to prepare right. for what was coming." So yeah, God was with him. Yes, mm-hmm. that's good. Paul, what was your favorite part of chapter seven of that sermon of Stephen? Uh, Do you have a comment about that? Yeah, about Stephen when he. Um, uh, when, when, uh, Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, Elaine, question thirty-seven, please. I, I, I can't. No, I, I can't. I, I have to go through the whole accident. You, now, now let me let me give you a um, a, uh, a tip about this, Elaine. If you have um, a, a, a access to a computer or a portable computer in your pocket, you know, with like a phone. You type in the word, maybe Barnabas, or you type the word separate, or something like that. You may be able to find these words. You have, you have the Bible on your computer, don't you, Paul? On your phone? Uh, actually, I do. Mm-hmm. I, have, I also have a faith, uh, the faith study Bible, but the thing is, I, don't guess, I, don't, I have to have a password to get into it. I don't have a password to get into it. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you can maybe get the password sometime and you can use it again. But, but if we look here, and if you're, if you're stuck, if you don't remember, so you could, you could, you could look it up in your... It's, it's like I said, they'll use it a concordance, a, a paper concordance, old-fashioned, a book concordance. That takes a lot more work than you have these electronic concordances. I got, yeah, you know. I got the big thing. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, but it's in chapter 15, Elaine. Uh, chapter 15, verse uh, 35 or 39. And the contention was so sharp between them that he departed asunder, and from the other... And from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Um, Paul, question, um, question thirty-eight. Read the um, read it to me, please. Okay, 
Um, let's close the book of Acts this one word that completes half the purpose of growing the citizenship and our full of the Roman. Uh, I'm trying to remember that. I don't know if I said it already, but I think. Uh, chapter 16. The chief captain. Now, like I was like, like, like what you could do, Paul. I mean, I'll show you how to use, you should know how to use your phone, yes, you the Bible on your phone a little bit. Uh, I mean, it'd be helpful for you to be able to use it, because if you're thinking of a verse, like you try to, if you were remembering a verse today, um, not, not just you, Paul, but anyone, if you remember, if you remember a verse, we said, where is this verse? We have a phrase of it, and so we can go to our computer or, or some type of thing, and we can look it up by the phrase, and it'll bring up all the, all the verses with that phrase in it. And then that can narrow down our search. And so we do the word chief captain, and I'm not sure how many times it'll come up in the book of Acts, but then we look at all the verses where chief captain appears in the book of Acts, and we can find, like you were talking about the verse about no man knoweth the day or the hour, Paul? Yes. And so we can find that. We'll, we'll find that today at, at, uh, <coughs> at lunch. We'll look at your phone and we'll go to your, 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 your Bible you have on your, your computer, or your pocket computer, and you can find that verse. I'll show you how to do it. Right. Elaine, I can show you too, okay? And anyone that else wants to be shown, we can show. You know how to do it, Mom, or not? Use your phone. You have a phone. And now what you could all, with another thing, if you don't, aren't too familiar with, the, with that program, sometimes you, can, sometimes you just go to your favorite search engine and type in the phrase, a biblical phrase, and it will come up with, with the secular search engine to do the Bible verse, if you have, if you have the, if you're looking for it. Uh, but nonetheless, in, in question 38, in Acts 22, verse 30, 28, the Bible says, and the chief captain answered, with great sum of money I obtained this freedom. And Paul said, I was, but I was freeborn. Um, Faith, got question 39, please. Where in the book of Acts does scripture record the Lord Jesus Christ ascending into he- heaven? And what is your favorite verse from this chapter? Sure, It started at the beginning of the yeah. book. Yeah, very good, good place. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be excellent place to start off. <coughs> Acts 22, Okay, chapter one, and then we see here in verse nine it says, "And when he had spoken these things, uh, well, they behold, and he was taken up, and a cloud received him." Uh, out of their sight. Uh, Mom, question 40, please. In what chapter of the book of Acts does the Lord use Philip to witness the man of Ethiopia? In what government and position did this man hold? Acts K27. That's right. King's treasurer. That's right. And there, I, um, there arose uh, and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of the great authority, the Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who had the charge of all her treasure. And he came to Jerusalem to worship. Um, and then in verse 35, then Philip opened at the same, he was reading the book of Isaiah, opened, the same, opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Uh, Tammy, question 41, please. It didn't switch. Well, no, I haven't. Okay, all right. Sorry. Uh, question 41. 1631, that's very good. Uh, Jacob, uh, question 42, please. 42. Where in the book of Acts does one read of a conspiracy of over 40 soon-to-be hungry men <laughs> killed the Apostle Paul and who foiled the, the plan? That will be found in uh, chapter 23, verses 12 and 21. And who foiled the plan was God <laughs> himself through his providence working through Paul's sister's son who some people say would be his nephew. 
That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, you see the verse 12 of chapter 23. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. So, question 43. In what chapter of the book of Acts did the apostles uh, speak foreign languages of which they did not know during uh, the Feast of Pentecost? That's chapter 2. Chapter 2, in verse uh, 4 and thereabouts. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And Benny Hinn wasn't even there. He wasn't. What? These are, these are known foreign languages. Known, known, known foreign languages. Um, Barbara, question 44, please. In what part of the book of Acts does Scripture first record Paul's Damascus Road encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ? And in what other chapters in the book of Acts is this account retold? 9, 18, and 26. 9, 22, and 26. Okay. But um, 18 is close enough. 9, 22, 26. Right. But yeah, it's just three times. Uh, chapter 9. Tammy. Now, were you talking about salvation? That's going to be in. Yes, please, please tell me where else. In, in chapter 24, he was giving a testimony of what had happened to him mm-hmm. since the Jews had attacked him. Okay, so that's true. That's true. Okay. So maybe that helps happen in 18 as well. But so it's not, it's not the. Yeah, the, the question is not, not limited to, um, and so that, that'll work too, Tammy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I so Barbara, okay, what's 18, 18 is fine. 18 works too. I have a red print Bible, and Jesus is talking in chapter 8. Okay, all right. <laughs> that, that'll work too, right? <laughs> I've got a Bible of all the words of Christ in, earth, in black. That's good. That's the kind I have, Jacob. Um, Elaine, question 45. You might, you know, you may know this one, Elaine. We we have a memory verse. Um, we were working on on Sunday afternoon. We try to go through this here. I try to pick the, but this these questions are supposed to be familiar questions, but I guess they're not all familiar. Yeah, that is a memory verse. You no. Know. Mm-hmm. We're doing question forty-five. Elaine's um, answering this question. I'll read the verse, and you tell me where it's found, Elaine. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, like, in that they received the word of God with all readiness in mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether or not those things were so. Look around, Acts 17. Yeah, that's a good place to start. And so you find it there in 17, Elaine? Verse 11? Okay. <laughs> and so then why should this still be practiced today in today's church Elaine because it's not the okay All right mm-hmm. and so what, and what's the benefit of searching the scriptures daily we just said Paul uh, so now we do we know can we get with you? First of all, we can meditate upon God's word, uh, find out what the Lord is telling us, mm-hmm. and also that we may know that the Lord's will for our lives. Yes, that's right. That's good. Uh, Tammy, can I add something? Please do. Please add something. Um, because in our day, just like the day, uh, this at uh, the context of the book right. writing, um, there's a lot of false teaching in the world, and um, men are fallible, mm-hmm. and yes, they only are. God. And his words to be our guide. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to add to sure, it. please add to it. And also, they'll be convicted uh, not to sin. Mm-hmm. God. That's good. Anyone else want to add to it? That's good, Joel. Uh oh. All right, Paul. Question 46, please. Okay. Can, I, can you help him out, please, with question 46? Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's, it's a, what chapter of the book of Acts does one read about a man 
by the name of Sir Wolf. And Mr. Luck, you know. So tell me what he's known for, Paul, first. Mm -hmm. Do you know what he's known for? I, mean, I remember, I know I've read it, but I don't I'm not quite, I remember right now. Right there at the beginning of uh, chapter 24. 24, okay. I need to carry it, I guess. Sure. Twenty-four. Okay. Uh, and after five days, uh, Ananias and high, the high priest, the high priest descended with the elders in there, and certain, uh, certain, uh, certain or orator named Tertullus, who informed, who informed the governor against Paul. Twenty-four. And reverse two as well, Paul. Okay. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, "Seeing that we, seeing that we, uh, seeing by thee, uh, we enjoy great, a great, great quiet, great quietness, and that very, and that very worthy uh, deeds are done unto this nation by uh, this nation by thy promise." Okay, good. So we see here, so it's chapter 24, and uh, he was the orator. Tell us, was uh, an orator. Uh, faith, question 47, please. <coughs> what part of the book of Acts does one read of a lame man being healed at the beautiful gate of the temple? Acts 3. That's right, Acts 3. Okay. And, and verse 6 says, um, uh, when. when Peter was confronting him. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I given to the name of Jesus Christ, or the Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Mom, um, question 48, please. Where does one first read about Peter's rooftop vision of the great sheep? Where does one first read about Peter's rooftop vision of the great sheep? And in what chapter of Acts 10, in what other chapter does Peter read what had happened to him on the rooftop? Acts 11, 5. And what was the point of the vision? Peter should take the uh, scripture to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. In verse uh, 10, verse 15, And the voice spake unto him the second time, What God hath cleansed, call thou not common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. All right, so question 49, please. Oh, oh, yes, please. Verse 48. Mm -hmm. I, put, I just had found it in my search or whatever. Um, also, <clears throat> number 3, 48, 3. What was the point of the vision? I thought also uh, let Peter know that he and other Jewish Christians were permitted to enter the homes of the Gentiles to bring them the good news of Jesus Christ. That's good. And so that was the he was using an illustration of, uh, of meat, clean beasts, unclean or rather unclean beasts, and the Gentiles represent unclean. And so that that was a good observation, Joel. Good point. That's that's the, what the point of the part of the point of the vision was. And then as soon as after the vision, we had, we had the knock of the door, and Cornelius and his men were coming and say we have to bring you back to Cornelius. He's, he wants to see you. Cornelius is a Gentile. Uh, Barbara. I have a question, please. Oh, My answer to that was just in general, what God has cleansed, call, call not thou uh, common. Um, the Gentiles defiled the Jew. As she said, you couldn't go to the house. And mm -hmm. there was the dietary laws and everything else. Mm -hmm. At what point... Was this all cleansed in, at the crucifixion, or the, I mean the resurrection, or when was it cleansed? When did, when, when did the Gentiles when, when become the, clean? When, when the veil in the temple was rent. That's only when Christ was on the cross and salvation was accomplished. The you know, death. Okay. Tammy. Oh. She was just yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, she does. Um, did, we, did, we, did we address your question, follow-up question there, Barbara? As far as... Well, now when I have an answer. I have to chew on it. Okay, so I mean, I'm, I'm saying... <coughs> the, the, the point is... The reason why I say when the veil on the temple was right, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a, was a symbol that, that was a... 
the Holy of Holies was there was no longer a need for that sacrificial system anymore right. because it was accomplished with Calvary's cross so the whole system was not needed anymore because it had been fulfilled at Calvary well except everything but, wasn't complete until he entered heaven with his own blood okay so may, maybe we could, we could extend it to that point in time but as far as but when Christ was still on the earth you know related to before his ascension for sure but I'm, I'm, I, I, bring it, I bring it to when the, when the veil in the temple was rent. And of course, um, when, when he, could have had the, he could have had the blood at that time with him in heaven. Or maybe it was if he, if he... Yes, Jacob, go ahead. Wait, wait a minute, uh, Jacob. Um, yeah, go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, I think this, this question here is, you know, uh, if you'd allow me to speak here on this, that the God don't see time like we do. I, I was thinking of something back in Isaiah oh, 056, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. There were Gentiles that were that were, were proselytes. Uh, no, it's I'm, I'm in Psalms. I can't find it in Psalms. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this this work was finished from uh, the foundation of the world, right? Oh, I this is kind of a complex question. I, I think uh, the answer I put here that God had also provided salvation unto the Gentiles. Well, mm-hmm. 56, that's where it is, I think. Uh, yeah, it says here about the Gentiles in Isaiah 56 that the ones that were proselytes, and they had to have come out of faith to see mighty works of God in Israel, right? So mm-hmm. it says here, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than a sons and daughters. The only way I can see that is better than a sons and daughters that were not believers, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Yeah, I think the answer to this is oh I just I can't see the total totality of it because uh he meant this from the very beginning, so many scriptures to promise salvation to Gentiles in the Old Testament, I wouldn't even know where to start. I mean, if we want to be more precise, perhaps, Barbara, when, when we can say when the redemption was complete, when the redemptive work of Christ was complete, and I would, I would seem, to, seem to indicate that would be when the veil of the temple was rent, but you, I mean, so we have to look at a broader understanding when, when we got the redemptive work of Calvary was completed, um, whether it be at the resurrection or the grant, uh, you see, he'd already had won the victory, and uh, the resurrection was just because he, he, he was God. He three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. Uh, so at the resurrection, uh, that the redemption could have been completed then. It could have been completed when the, when the veil temple was rent. But uh, great, great, granted, it was, it was acknowledged or it was realized at the resurrection. Right. Uh, it was realized at the resurrection. It was already completed, but it was realized at the resurrection. Bill, you have a thought? Yeah. Uh it's a sort of indirect uh, from Barbara. God made a provision uh, for the Gentiles uh, in the Abrahamic covenant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. Mm-hmm. I understand yeah. all that, but my question was that still, they were still unclean. You could not go into a Gentile house mm-hmm. and not be defiled. And that's been Peter, in, in, even in Acts 10, mm-hmm. Peter was still thinking that. Right. He, he, was, still, he was still abiding by the, the, the law. But God told you know, them, don't, you know, right. they are... Mm-hmm. They are right. not common mm-hmm. anymore. Right. So at some point, from mm-hmm. when they were to when they weren't. Right. Mm-hmm. What God has cleansed, called them not common. Um, and so, but like you said, Peter and the other other Jews were still practicing the fact that the Gentiles were unclean. Um, even today, some of them are still practicing that as well. Uh, but uh, Peter, what Peter was told here in Acts uh, chapter ten about this. The Jews re- rejected the gospel. They, they, didn't want, they had not, wanted nothing to do with the, with the gospel. Um, some, many of them did not to, want to. Jill, uh, question 49, please. Priscilla, I'm pull up. <clears throat> I mentioned in Romans chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 4, and what chapter of the book of Acts? Acts 18. Acts 18, that's right. The three, beginning of 18, kind of in the middle of 18, and so 18 verses 1 to 3 and so they're, they're mentioned in Acts chapter 18 um, Tammy question 50 please what part of the book of Acts reveals what Agrippa and his wife came um, or rather 
that microphone is why he came to the hearing. The great call, um, that's in Acts 25, verse 23. And what was the name of Agrippa's wife? It's Bernice. And the morrow when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great pomp was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captain and the principal men of the city, at Festus' command, Paul was brought forth. <coughs> uh, Jacob, uh, question 51, please. 51. Mm-hmm. In what chapter of the book of Acts do Peter and John tell the council, for we cannot speak, cannot but speak the things which we have heard? That would be chapter 4 and verse 20. Yeah, for we, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Chapter 4, verse 20. Um, turn your fan on if you want to. Um, Bill, question 52, please. Where in the book of Acts does Peter tell uh, the born again Christians in Jerusalem about his vision of the great sheet? I didn't look that up, so I don't have an answer for that. 11. Okay. Acts 11. Um, it happened in verse, t- verse 10, his actual vision, but then he recounted it in chapter 11. In verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. Uh, Barbara, question 53, please. In what part of the book of Acts does one read of the silversmith Demetrius? 19. Acts 19, 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, the silversmith, which made a silver shrine for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Uh, Elaine, question 54, please. That's chapter 27. Chapter 27, that's right. That's good. Uh, question 55. I'll oh, read the question, Elaine. Uh, it says, in what chapter of the book of Acts can read about the ship being broken in pieces? Uh, chapter 20. All right. Uh, Paul, question 55. Chapter. Oh, uh, Elaine has read it yet. Okay. Elaine, read. So where, where were the seven men, seven deacons selected, Paul? Sorry, I don't have a photographic memory. I'm sorry, sorry. Of course, I understand. Chapter. Oh, it's on chapter 6. Chapter 6, that's right. Mm-hmm. Chapter 6, verse 3. You have that in front of you, Paul? Chapter 6, verse 3? Go ahead and read it. Uh, You may miss the line here. Let me let me read it. Um, sorry, Paul. Sorry. I guess you got to switch. It was on two different pages, wasn't it? Um, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among yourselves seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Uh, Faith, question fifty-six, please. And what part of the book of Acts does Scripture record the Holy Ghost saying, "Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them"? And verse 2, right? And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, 
Set for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein I have called them. And when they fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. I'm on question 57, please. In what chapter of the book Fast is when we have you that's falling down from the third law? That's on your verse 9. Right. That's right. And there was sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus. And he fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So question 58, please. We're in the book of Acts. You quickly say that Paul almost out for me. Acts 26, verse 28. Yes. That's right. Acts 26, 28. Um, Tammy, question 59, please. Yes. Mm-hmm. Question 59. I want to write the book of Acts to point out about um, the judgment of Annas and Sapphira. Uh, that's in Acts chapter 5, 1 through 10. And what did they do that required judgment? They lied to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Uh, Jacob, question 60, please. In what chapter of the book of Acts does one read about a young woman by the name of Rhoda? And who is she? It's chapter 12, and she was a damsel, a damsel uh, excuse me, uh, serving upon, in a part of the church. That's right. And um, Peter came knocking on the door, and she heard Peter's voice, and was glad to hear Peter's voice, and but didn't open the door. Went and told everybody, Peter's at the door, and, and they said, no, Peter's in jail. He's probably going to be killed. It's maybe his spirit. And, but Peter kept on knocking. And finally, they let him in. And they were all amazed that the Lord had answered the prayer. <clears throat> Tim, your thought? I think she was in shock. Yeah, she was in shock. I think she would have been in shock. Yeah, that's right. Barbara? That was her job to hearken, to listen. Yes. It wasn't her job to open the ah, door. Ah, okay. So she listened. So she did her job. So she did her job. So she heard Peter's mm-hmm. voice. She knew yes. his voice. And she went back and did what she was supposed yes. to do. Mm-hmm. And then the people that were supposed to open the door. Mm-hmm. They did. They did. Okay. Bill, you're fine. I'm going to be verse 61. I'm sorry. Okay. From that verse. So, uh, question 61. Okay. What is something you have been reminded about? from Acts chapter 28 and what does this mean to you and others in the church well I go to uh, verse 27 um, for, uh, for the heart of this people is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Uh, this is an interesting situation that for uh, it applies to everybody, whether they believe or they don't believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has uh, carries the meaning of both. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that, uh, and it speaks overall of the, the whole church condition, mm-hmm. uh, the, the whole condition of society. Right. I think today. That's why that particular verse really stands out for me. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, that does relate to uh, Parker. Your uh, question sixty-one for you, please. Preaching and teaching these things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, out of the law of Moses and the prophets, um, with all confidence, the teaching and preaching with all confidence, okay. out of Scripture, mm-hmm. because the confidence God spoken in His Word. And so we can have confidence that it's true because it's the only way we can really know him is, is through his word and what he says. Right. And so we can do it with all confidence. Um, when I witness to somebody, I never say I believe or I think or I feel or whatever. My only response is scripture says you want an argument, it's not with me. Mm-hmm. Um Scripture says this. Scripture says this. Scripture says that. Right. You know? mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, with all confidence. Mm-hmm. Yes. Elaine, question 61, please. Oh, like, the, in verse 
Paul, uh, question 61, please. Go ahead read that for him, Paul. Uh, okay. What is something you have been writing about in Acts chapter 28? What does that mean to you and others in today's church? Uh, this is uh, a young word. It's just from a chapter. In yeah, chapter 28. Mm-hmm. What is something you've, what's something you've been reminded about from Acts chapter 28? And what does that mean to you and others in today's church? Well, it means that, um, well, I guess, I mean, I mean, I've read it, but I guess to put it in briefly is that the, the, script, the scriptures are always, the scriptures are, are always, the scriptures are always right. Yes, they are. And, uh, mm-hmm. What I've learned from this particular, from this particular chapter is that um, uh, to, I don't know what, I'm, right, what I've learned from this chapter is that God's word is always inspired. It, it always inspires me. Faith, uh, question sixty-one, please. What is something you've reminded about from that? Chapter 28, what does that mean to you others in this church? I just, I, my favorite part here is when it says um, they appointed him a day and became many to him to be expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. I thought that was Where terrific. That's very good. Yes. Mm-hmm. I really you know, was impressed by that. Uh, I think 61. Uh, question 61. Uh, I didn't have anything written down here, but I'm sitting here and thinking about how people jump to conclusions about Paul. And I don't know if he came there. Mm-hmm. He was a bad person. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that he was a good person. Mm-hmm. But they made conclusions about him that were wrong. And we often do that on people. We should not, but we do. Right. Mm-hmm. So we should just know something about the kind of person they are. Right. Mm-hmm. How about you, Joel? Question 61. Well, I'm um, pretty intrigued, intrigued by it in the chapter, and uh, I just uh, research on it, but also I've put my own insights in here as well, and just a combination of mm-hmm. each, but I wrote like a small book, so don't mind like me. It's okay. Um, People can be encouraged and comforted in knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ can heal them and protect them from suffering as he showed mercy upon Paul in Acts 28. 6, when Paul was bitten by the viper and the Lord kept him from dying, um, suffering any effects from the poison. As a result, Paul was able to be used by God in this way by having a tremendous healing ministry among the natives um, on the island. You can also learn some lessons about spiritual warfare. Paul was in prison in Rome but was able to pay uh, for private lodging and he had a Roman soldier who, who was chained to him 24 hours of the day. Paul's Roman guard was changed every several hours. Uh, God orchestrated this. For in this way many Roman soldiers were caused to hear the gospel message and read Paul's letters firsthand and thus many had the opportunity to come to salvation. Also, Paul was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. However, when they examined him, they were willing to release him because there was no ground for putting him to death. Um, and from this section of scripture, Paul also was used by God to convey the truth of the gospel <coughs> to the Christians in Rome. 
and that's all. Right, Tammy, your question, sister one, please. Thank you, John. It's okay. No, it's not. Um, well, I was focusing on the um, first twenty four where it says, and some believe the things that were spoken and some believe not. Mm-hmm. Because he had a lot of liberty. All the things that happened to him on the ship uh, surely had an impact on the way that they treated yes, him. Mm-hmm. And um, the people were able to come to him. First the Jews came. And that was... And that reminded me of um, Romans 10 and 1. Mm-hmm. And Paul's, for, you know, his desire, yes. his earnest desire was what took him to Jerusalem to begin with. Mm-hmm. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel was that they might be saved. Mm-hmm. And um, he was, because of his willingness to suffer and to bear through these, these, um, this imprisonment and chains, he was able to um, save like bring some um, souls to Christ mm-hmm. um, that were his mm-hmm. brethren. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and, uh, now I'm going to read because I don't, I don't remember exactly what I said, so I hope it makes sense. He realized God's wisdom in sending him to the Gentiles as he spoke to them. Isaiah's words from Isaiah 6, 9, and 10, um, you know, about how um, God's people were going to be dull of hearing and eyes that were closed and dull of heart. Ultimately, he understood. Um, that salvation would be sent to the Gentiles who would hear it in verse 28. But it seemed like he still had um, a, a burden and, um, for his people, even though the, the futility of everything that he did, you know, in, in coming, going to Jerusalem, mm-hmm. taking a vow, and all the things that um, ended up happening to him, being in prison, and even Agabus warned. You know, that there was going to be you know, chains and bonds ahead for him. Yes. Now, God warned him through the Holy Spirit with about many of the sufferings that he would endure. Mm-hmm. But it was so important to him that um, his people needed the gospel. But even, you know, in spite of that, he continued. Um, and then Paul there with him. Let's see. Question. Oh, okay. Um, it, Okay, so I, then I was thinking about the, the verse in Acts 1. I'm trying, I'm trying not to um, read this, but I have to kind of look at what I wrote. In Acts 1, 6, um, where, you know, they, they asked, oh, Lord, will thou restore again the kingdom to Israel? Mm-hmm. And surely um, the, the 11 and the 120, either or the 120, whoever he was speaking to, you know, it's not for the times and seasons, um, must have known, or must must have expected, you know, a restoration of the kingdom, mm-hmm. and so the Jews then would. I mean, they all the other all the other um, apostles were sent to the, the Jews, but um, Paul was had a special mission. Yes. But yet his heart was still for his people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just a continual, um, a continual uh, thing. So. Right. That's true. Jacob, our question is just one. Thank you, Timmy. Yeah, I'm glad you asked me last, Pastor Dan, because uh, I, I heard what Bill said and I heard what Tammy said. Well, I heard most of what Tammy said. Uh, it's kind of hard to hear from here from the back of the room, but yeah, 20, uh, verse 24 and, and, and 26 and 27. Uh, I go back to this thing in Ezekiel uh, 2, and I was looking at it while well, oh, they were talking. And it says here in 2.5, And whether they will hear, whether they will forbear, if they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there have been a prophet among them. Now, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their wives, fires, and thorns, and wind, thee. Let us dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor despair at their looks, for they are, though they are a rebellious house. And I shall speak my words unto them, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, if they are most rebellious. Uh, yeah, this and and he says after that, verse eight. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee: Be not thou rebellious like a rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat what I give thee. Uh, this, this 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 gospel, all of it, 
And, uh, and that reminds me, and I had I had a mark here in uh, Ezekiel 2 5. It was Isaiah 55 12. When I went there, I, I was going through 11. Because I was thinking of these two verses, I had to put 11 and 12 there instead of just 12. Mm-hmm. So shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. And it's God's mm-hmm. will that everyone would be saved, but uh, this next verse in 12 shows the kingdom here. Mm-hmm. Very clearly, uh, in Isaiah 55, 12, For he shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace in the mountains, and the hills shall break forth before you in the singing. All the trees shall clap their hands. And, and it's just, uh, you know, what I said before, uh, it's not our responsibility to, uh, uh, we can't, we couldn't save anybody if we wanted to. It's Christ that saves them. Mm, that's right. we have to we have to know the gospel number one and uh, and walk in it as well as we can number two and, mm-hmm. and then we can you know go out and tell others stay faithful to the words of God so if we're not faithful to this word uh, then it's not good we got to stay right with the gospel you know? that's right and, yeah, not, not water it down I have no questions to you thank you Jacob of what three big things you are appreciative from your study of the entire book of Acts? Well, <laughs> that's a big one because uh, this is uh, the foundation for uh, the church. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, starting at, uh, well, starting with uh, uh, the ministry of Christ, but uh, actually uh, at Pentecost, uh, uh, that's the establishment of the church. Uh, and then we have uh, the deacons coming in later, mm-hmm. um, uh, the choosing of Paul as uh, an apostle and not Matthias. Uh, so many things uh, which we rely on, so many things which are followed throughout the, uh, the New Testament. The book of Acts is like uh, is to the New Testament what uh, the book of Genesis is to the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. It's a foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, to name three things uh, in particular, I don't know if I can do three. Mm-hmm. We've read these three things. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's say the, the deacons uh, selected mm-hmm. uh, is for the structure of our modern church as we see it uh, mm-hmm. today. Um, um, uh, the miracles uh, which followed uh, from Pentecost on through uh, the lives of uh, the apostles, mm-hmm. uh, the mi- miracles uh, that they performed, and, uh, uh, is, is such a great example, uh, which eventually would be abolished uh, right. because mm-hmm. we would have a complete Bible right. uh, in that. Mm-hmm. But if the miracles were a sign. Uh, to non-believers of the truth right. mm-hmm. uh, to follow in uh, the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much there. Yes, there is. So that uh, yeah, you can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Barbara, questions is two, please. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Bill, said, Bill said you go on and on, so yeah, yeah, it's your turn. My, t- my turn to go on yes. and on? Um, the first thing is God rules in the affairs of men mm-hmm. um, Alexander the Great cried because there were no more worlds to conquer I mean he, he was it he ruled the known mm-hmm. mm-hmm. world and he Hellenized the world culturally in preparation for Rome to come which had the longest piece of history of Pax Romana that the world has ever had 250 mm-hmm. years. Not that it was absolutely dead quiet, but basically people were in quiet and peace. It was prosperous. It was full of commerce. It was as close to pre-tower of Babel that the world had come to since Babel. Mm-hmm. Um, Rome added law and 
her army and her might and her engineers. I mean, you could, you go to Europe and you walk through Roman streets and Roman buildings just like it was yesterday. Mm. Um, they gave order to the world and they kept that order in preparation for the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and the beginning of the church and the, of the gospel uh, to the world because of the commerce and, and the Roman roads and the peace that Rome had. It, it's When you look at it historically, it's, I find it horrendously awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I, I thought about was basically what I said, said about last week, you know, the circumstances of life. So, our lives start in Caesarea and they end up in Rome and in between is the shipwreck. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not pleasant, but God promised us we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And he's faithful that promised. Um, and he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. We're getting to Rome, one way or another, however smooth, rough, or whatever, mm -hmm. we will get to Rome. Right. Um, and then, uh, I alluded to this earlier, is um, they preached Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, from the scriptures, which was strictly the Old Testament, mm -hmm. from Moses and the, and the prophets. Um From that, they brought Christianity, brought, Paul talked about the hope of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and they brought it, he brought it all together to show the Jews who rejected it. So he had to go to the Gentiles, you know, that was our blessing, mm -hmm. to know who this Lord Jesus Christ was. And the circumstances that God uses when he works on our own personal history, let alone political history, to bring about his will. Mm -hmm. the, the, the book, I, I look at Acts as history, and it's, it's just awesome. It is. It is. Anybody any questions? Just two, please. Well, I think I agree with what Paul said. She's so already. She's so already, too, right? All right, good. Uh, Paul, um, just to do, read re sixty two for me, Lane. Uh, okay. Uh, what three big things you are appreciative from the study of the entire book of Acts? Well, the chapters are, uh, I guess it's my personal opinion. Uh, they're concise and to the point. Uh, very, very, the word is very explicit. Yes, they are. And Tells what you know what, what the Lord wants us to know, and um, it tells us uh, this is well for us. Mm -hmm. Faith, uh, questions to two. Thanks, Paul. What three big things you're appreciative from the study of the book of Acts? Um, I can tell you without even looking Good. at one chapter, okay. is when. That um, the jailer, remember? In Acts 16. He, yeah, he's going to kill himself be because of the earthquake and everybody's loose and everything like that. And, um, and Paul said to him, not to be afraid and, you know, we're all here, don't kill yourself and all mm -hmm. that. And, um, and then when the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and he will be saved in your yes. I, I just love that passage. Mm -hmm. I love the passage. And that's one thing. And then uh, two, uh, let me see, number two would be uh, well, I like it when it says Paul was in his own house for two years for some reason. I like, mm -hmm. I like that part. And um, you know, like you, and like you said about that, um, that insect or whatever bit him, mm -hmm. he was okay. The Lord yes. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, questions too, uh, please. Uh, well, I wasn't really having anything to answer for this, but I, I do appreciate uh, getting a look at accidents. Good. Doing it. And, uh, 
reminded me of Bible school days, my Bible school. Good. Good. And how much I'd forgotten. And so it's a very good thing to uh, mm-hmm. review this. In fact, yes. It should be reviewed more. Yes. Mm-hmm. It should be. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. You too, or anybody else. Anyway. Joe, of course, it's too, please. Um, it's not overwhelming because there are so many things that you can put yes, there are. in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are. So many things. I mean, I couldn't feel a bar on that note. <laughs> so, um, I think, therefore, I was just a little more general. Mm-hmm. But I just put here, well, in the book of Acts, it relates the story of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven. And, uh, number two, the work that he began was to be completely completed by his disciples who were to be his witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth which is Acts 1, 8 and uh, 3, the Lord co- accomplished his mission with the gospel message going to the remotest part of the earth Thank you Tammy, uh, question 62 please Well, because everyone is It's okay. Um, because everyone, um, because everyone's talked a lot about the contents of the book, I'm just going to give a quick summary of what I what I wrote, mm-hmm. because otherwise it'll just be too much. So, um, but most of all, I wanted to say that I especially appreciated the review sections. I know everyone grumbled and complained about them, but that is what Mm -hmm. helped to cement in my mind what happened and the chronology of it and how God worked. So because of that, I can see a picture of how God moved from um, Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and mm-hmm. to the outermost part of the earth. That progression through the book of Acts, and um, there was another thing that kind of, you know, I, because I could see that, yes. then I could see the transitional nature of the book of Acts. I've always heard it's a transitional book, but it just those transitions in themselves is one thing, mm-hmm. but then also tying in the verse in First Corinthians where it says um, in First Corinthians 1 where it says um, that the Jews require a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. Mm-hmm. You can see how Pentecost was a huge you know, miracle of God. People speaking in foreign tongues. This was mainly to the Jews. I mean it was basically to the Jews. Right. And then as you progress, mm-hmm. the signs become different. Mm-hmm. And, and they become less and less because the gospel is being spread more to the, the Gentiles. About God is opening the door, mm-hmm. lining the eyes of the Jews, and, and allowing the, the Gentiles to partake in this mystery of the church, which those in the, in the Old Testament and, and the Israel... Right. And the Jewish nation mm-hmm. couldn't see. Because even even the apostles, I think, for a while struggled to see it themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's why they asked the question in chapter 1. Right. Will you now restore the kingdom? And the Lord said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which is very applicable to this yeah. very day. It is. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, some people think that the world is going to end, or whatever they think. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's not for us to know and, and but he did show through that book mm-hmm. of Acts through that time that progressed. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many years. How many years would you say that it was? Twenty. So the book of Acts. Mm-hmm. Oh, probably twenty or thirty years. Okay, so yeah. in that twenty to thirty year period, he even began to it seemed like reduce mm-hmm. the number of signs and wonders. Right. Um, and then mm-hmm. the wisdom of God came in the form of the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Jacob, how about you? Question thir- uh, 62. Well, Pastor Dan, uh, three things, three big things. Yes. You know, my, my, my one, the, the first thing is, I can't. I really can't add much to what's already been said. And, and the second thing is, 
I didn't notice that 62 was here. <laughs> See, that's, that's two big things, Jake. If you had a third one. <laughs> 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 so I, I can add much to what we that's good, Jake. That's fine. Thank you. Any more thoughts or comments? Any questions? 62 and piece of number two. Proper. Yeah. So it's cute. cute. Something Jill said triggered thought in my mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. brain. And Rome ruled the then known world. They owned Britain and they had commerce with China mm-hmm. for 150 years. They found Roman coins in Japan. Mm-hmm. So everybody but us, okay? We are a direct result of Paul. We are his disciples. Mm-hmm. That's right. Any more? That's him. I, I wrote this, but I didn't remember it. So Barbara said what she just said. Mm-hmm. Um, even though God, it, um, the Apostle Paul had a heart, he had a, a, a deep burden for his people. God called him to be missionaries to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, he had to take him through those emotional struggles for his people mm-hmm. and bring it back to, you know, in this chapter where he right. says, you know, that. It's, you know, your eyes are dark and blind and you can't hear. Yes. And, and he had to realize again that, you know, the church, that mystery, that church age was, was happening. Mm-hmm. So that, that nobody knew about. Right. That's right. Church is a mystery. It's, it's hidden. And that's for real. And we're living, we're living in it. Mm-hmm. In the time of law, the time of duties, it has been suspended. For a while, so Daniel's seventh week will be completed during the tribulation time period. Uh, let's uh, let's close with the word of prayer. Uh, Father, we do thank thee for thy word and for the, the scripture of all the different events that have happened in the Book of Acts. Uh, ministry of Peter, the ministry of Paul and Philip and of Stephen, and all the other men and the women who were mentioned in this book. Allow us to be encouraged as we reflect upon it and remember what we've read and allow us to read it again soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okie dokie. We'll see you.